y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love the old church. That old brother, pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet. Welcome to After the Sermon Podcast, where we explore timeless lessons from the Bible and connect them to the challenges we face today. I'm your host, Cody Bowen, and I'm excited to dive into a powerful story of faith and courage. In today's episode, we're delving into the heart-pounding narrative of David and Goliath, a story of unlikely hero facing overwhelming odds. But it's not just a tale of ancient times, it's a lesson in how we can conquer our giants in the modern world. We're honored to have a very special guest with us today, Minister Benny Wilkerson. In a few moments, Minister Wilkerson will introduce himself and provide us with insights and wisdom on how to face our giants, drawing from his own experiences and insights from his sermon that he delivered yesterday. So grab your Bible, pull up a chair, and prepare to be inspired. Let's dive into the giants keep coming, but they do die. Good evening, good day, brothers and sisters. Uh, I am Benny Wilkerson Jr. Uh, I am the Associate Minister of the Simpson Street uh, Church of Christ. And we had an awesome day in worship on uh, yesterday. Uh, We were looking at David and Goliath. One of the things that we pointed out about uh, this uh, this story. Uh, we recognize first and foremost that it is a familiar story, but we did not want that familiarity with the story to cloud us in missing some spiritual points uh, that we believe that the Lord will have his children to know. When we talk about giants, we are talking about situations that you didn't necessarily plan on being in. Uh, We're talking about obstacles. We're talking about uh, emotional issues. We're talking about uh, financial issues. We're talking about family issues. All of these can be giants uh, to any individual. And if we are not equipped to fight these giants, They will bombard us, they will shake us, and they will cause us to have some spiritual issues if not dealt with appropriately. The giants keep coming. As long as you and I live, the giants will keep coming. But the shouting news is, but they do die. Grab your Bibles and let's look at this. All right. It was an inspiring message, uh, Benny. Um, I love the way you actually packaged your sermon. It, it really made it relatable. And people often kind of skim over it and take the cliche way out of it by just saying, you know, having faith in overcoming your your giants. And that's it. And But you really... Uh, dive deep into it and for those that are listening to just the podcast take the time out to go to our youtube channel in simpson street church of christ and watch that sermon you will not be disappointed um on sunday i had a let's just say a sermon reporter who was sitting in the audience and she submitted some of these questions so i'd like to give a special shout out to Danielle miller uh thank you for submitting these questions So one of the questions that she had was, what inspired you to write this sermon? Oh, wow. Um, My inspiration comes from looking at people, watching people and listening to people. People are hurting. Uh, People are struggling, uh, dealing with family issues, dealing with children, Spouses are struggling uh, with one another. Uh, again, you know, we're living in a time where, you know, money is always short. <laughs> so, yep. 
economic issues. Uh, people are unemployed, job issues. Uh, people are depressed, uh, uh, just emotionally unstable. Um, and all of these to me are, are really, they're giants, you know? And just like the children of Israel, they, they looked at the outside, they looked at the outside um, and they saw Goliath as something that they could not conquer. And that's exactly what I believe people are going through. They're, they're looking, many of us are looking at our obstacles. We're looking at our giants as if they cannot be conquered. You're so, you're so right. Um, <clears throat> the world is getting more and more crazier as we go day by day. There's things that you never thought we would be having conversations about and these biblical uh, instances that are happening that if you're, you're a Bible, you know, studier, you will know there's some stuff going on in the world and it's getting more and more complicated as we are innovating and sharing information and we see stuff happening on the other side of the world. Definitely. So you're, you're so correct. And uh, I, I'm a very proponent for mental health and understanding your own personal mental health and not giving into the vices of what people say okay you have this mental health go take some medication and you know go about your way you know there's a spiritual component that i often speak about especially in our last episode with brother Watkins, where you know you have to tackle the the mental part the spiritual part and the physical part and you know they balance each other's out and it's very important to know that you can't overcome these giants no matter what it is and i'm glad i'm glad you mentioned that Cody, because uh, that's something that I strive to do as I preach, um, because as you know, I'm also a therapist as well. Um, yeah. And so in addition to preaching God's word, so I always want to be uh, uh, true, number one, to the text. Um, I also want to meet people where they are um, and want to be therapeutic, if you will, uh, yep. because people are hurting and, and the Bible is definitely therapeutic. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's something special for the soul. Most definitely. I 100% agree. Oftentimes, once you finish preaching, there's so many nuggets that I can pull from it. And I've applied a lot of your uh, preaching to certain things that I do in my lives. And I've, I've looked at life a different way, the way you have presented it. And I'm like, okay, I never thought I would understand it that way so i do appreciate the way you approach your sermons and the way you approach the way you teach the masses i appreciate, I appreciate that so my next question is uh how do you deal with a giant while you're waiting on them to die <laughs> good 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 question how do you deal with the giants while you're waiting for them to die well when I look at the text, when you look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, one of the things that, um, that stuck out to me is that notice what was happening, you know, from verses one, uh, between verses one and down to verse 20, I believe it is, you know what I'm saying? It starts off by saying that the children of Israel and the Philistines one was on the top of the hill. The other one was on the other side at the top of the hill. But when you get down to around verses 18, 19, and 20, when David comes on the scene, he finds them in the trenches, all right? Yeah. Which, 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 which suggests is that the children of Israel changed their position from the top of the hill, and now they're in the trench. Um, so, so there lies fear. And many times when we're dealing with our giants, fear, uncertainty, all of those things creep in. But also what it says is he found them in the trenches, but they were coming up out of the trench. Yep. And so what I'm suggesting is while you're waiting, you have to make up your mind that you, you want to come out of the trench. You yep. know, so 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 while you're waiting, you need to be actively making a decision and making some moves to come out of the trench. All right. But not only did it say, say that they were coming out of the trench, but it also says 
they were shouting. Yeah, they, they, they not praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were shouting. So what I'm suggesting is, so while you are waiting and getting ready for the battle, you need to be giving God some praise. You know, I, I, I think about Psalms 34 and verse one, uh, uh, what, what David say, I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall be continually in my mouth. So while you dealing with your giants and you're getting ready to go into battle with your giants, while you waiting for God to do whatever it is that he's going to do, you need to be singing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then in then Psalms uh, chapter 47 and verse one, David says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people shout unto God with the voice of triumph. While you're waiting, you have to know that God is going to give you the victory. Bottom line. So you're not just waiting and, and holding your hands. You're lifting up holy hands and you're shouting victory already because you know what God is about to do. I think we're going to have to make a t-shirt. Victory mindset. Yes, sir. We got to be in that victory mindset. I like it. I like it. Wow. That's, 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 that's lovely. I, I enjoy that part that you pointed out we have to just be shouting to god and you know again while you're shouting to god and calling on god your brothers and sisters around you they're going to see you praise in the midst of your storm mm -hmm. and that that's going to be inspiring to them and they're also going to come and support you but if you stay there and you stay in that one place and you just suffer in silence no one knows that you need help and like i said you're suffering in silence and you're just going to be there by yourself. So changing your perspective, changes the, change the way you're dealing with your situation, and you praising God and putting God first and listening to his uh, guidance, that's definitely the way to overcome your giants. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Next question is, what if you don't kill your giant? Well, Cody, I look at it like this. Number one, I'm a child of God. Uh, and what if is not even in my vocabulary? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, because the God that we serve is all powerful. Uh, he will do exactly what he said he will do. Um, and some giants, you know, they're, they're, they're hard. They're hard. They're hard to kill. Um, but that's why you and I, we have to be persistent. Um, we have to be determined and we have to be consistent. Um, and that's why we need uh, more than one stone. <laughs> we, that's why we need, we have to be prepared. You got to have more than one stone. Yes. Can God do it in one? He most certainly can. But what if he wants to see if we're prepared? Remember what we said, that the giants keep coming. So because they keep coming, you know what I'm saying? Are you prepared for the next one? Yes, yes, most definitely. And you mentioned stones, so that's the perfect segue to my next question. You actually stated that there were five stones that David had in his bag. Yeah. What are the names of those stones? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, um, because that's one thing that we didn't have time to really, to really, to really dive into uh, on yesterday. But one of the stones, number one, I kind of put it in two categories, depending on where you are as an individual. Uh, yeah. One of the stones is faith slash trust. And that, that depends on where you are. If faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, and if you have never seen God work in your life, in helping you to overcome any obstacle, then yeah, your first stone needs to be faith. But David's first stone was trust. And I look at trust as graduated faith. In other words, David saw what God can do in that he delivered him uh, from the bear as well as the lion. Remember that? Yeah. When, when, oh, yeah. when, when his sheep was when his sheep was uh captured by the bear and 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 and, and the lion he said 
God saw him through that and gave him the victory over the lion and the bear. So David had trust that God was going to see him through and help him deliver uh, and kill Goliath. Yeah. So that so that so that's that first stone. His first stone okay. was. This episode has been brought to you by the Simpson Street Church of Christ Ladies Ministries. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Pumping it up as we give recognition to our breast cancer survivors and those we memorialize during Breast Cancer Month. Immediately after Bible study, October 29, 2023, at Simpson Street Church of Christ, we will have a short service to give recognition to those who have lost their fight to cancer and those who have survived cancer. So, so, so the first stone uh, for David uh, was trust. But then the second stone in my mind is courage. Uh, David had the courage uh, that he needed to, to stand up against the Goliath in the midst of uh, where, while everybody else was scared and shaking in their boots and hiding. Uh, David had the courage to keep going. But then I see the third stone as being obedience. Uh, number one, because David, he was only there because he was being obedient to his father. Uh, his his father told him to go down and take some food to, to the brothers and to the other soldiers. And without question, David did what his father asked him to do. So that third stone was some obedience. Yep. Then, that, then, the, then, the, then, the, then the fourth stone is service. They, David, he had a mind to serve. He was a shepherd boy. He knew what it was like to care for sheep. He knew what it was like to serve. Uh, and as children of God, we need to learn, number one, we need to learn how to be obedient. You see? And we need to learn how to serve in the capacity in which God has placed us in. And then and then the third one would be praise. You know, that 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 fifth stone is it, praise. You know what I'm saying? No matter what we go through, we need to have a heart of praise. You know what I'm saying? I don't let nobody, I don't let anybody uh um, minimize my praise for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I don't worry about anybody trying to regulate my praise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you don't, people don't know what you've been through. Well, I take that back. People that are close to me know what I've been through, <laughs> you know, yeah, and those yeah. are the ones that I don't have issues with. It's those folk who's on the outside looking in and say, oh, yeah. it, it don't, it don't take all of that. Well, how do yeah. you know? <laughs> you don't know what giants I'm dealing with right now. Exactly. As children of God, we have to have praise on our lips. So yes, those man. are the five stones. Trust, uh, courage, obedience, service, and praise. Amen. So people, I hope you're writing this good stuff down. There's a lot of gems in here. We're going to move on to the next question. I guess this is the, the fifth and final question. Why did he get five stones if uh, one was going to do it? Well, I think what's important for us to understand is numerology in the Bible is essential to help us to understand some things. And, and five in the Bible, uh, it, it, it's a number of it, it's a number that represents strength and power, first and foremost grace and mercy and protection. Um, I, I, I think about I think about the five foolish virgins. Wow. <laughs> it was five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, and and and, and it, it it showed even in that parable, it showed uh preparedness, you know what I'm saying, or lack thereof. Uh, yeah. so when I think about five, David was being prepared. And remember what I said. You know, the giants, they keep coming. You know what I'm saying? So he was ready for Goliath's brothers, if his offsprings, you know, or his children, if his offsprings wanted to come and get some of that action. Um, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, David was prepared. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. And again, oftentimes when people read this uh, story, they overlook some of these things and... Um, our fearless leader has opened my eyes to some of the 
I wouldn't want to say hidden messages, but the message beyond the message in a lot of these stories and scriptures that we need to learn from. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's great that you brought that out, that even though he only used one stone, he had backup. And he had backup. That's, that's something that we all need to, to, to realize in our lives that, you know, there is going to be a solution that's going to get the problem or your giant dealt with, but just know that God got you. And yeah. there's a, there's different themes that can come out and I'm not going to get into my own sermon or anything like that. But I, I, what really hit home to me was just like what you pointed out about the service, being patient having faith and just following God's instructions. And it's so hard for some people to not realize that they're not listening to God. They're not waiting on his timing. They're becoming impatient and doing things on their own timing. And they keep wondering, why is it that I'm staying in this never ending cycle of problems? Mm -hmm. And that's because they're going off of their own blueprint and not God's blueprint. And it, it's interesting that you say that, Cody, because a thing I think we, we need to point out is we got to understand at this point in David's life, David was already anointed to be the next king, but he was not yet appointed. He was yeah. anointed, but not yet appointed. So in other words, God used him and positioned him and put him in this situation that he wanted to be in. David David waited for God to put him where he wanted him to be. And at this point in this story, God wanted him to be in the middle of this war. For what? To teach the people of God, look at what I can do if you truly trust me and wait for me to do what I do. Amen. So listeners, if you're going through something right now, you're facing your giants, just understand that it's for a purpose. It's for a reason. God's timing is different from your timing. And you're right where you need to be. Just keep praising, keep serving, be obedient, and just wait on God's timing. And your giants will too, like David, be overcome. Brother Benny, I appreciate you so much. Uh, if there's you anything know. you want to highlight, you can. If there's anything you want to point out to the people, you can. But I'm going to continue to uh, follow this trend that Brother Marcus set, where we end with a prayer. So I turn it over to you to close us out. So if if if, if anything that I would highlight, that I would definitely want uh, our listeners to 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 take away. When you look at when David got on the scene, when he went to the other men and he asked what is going to, what is, what's, what's the reward for the man who, or the men, the man who kills this uncircumcised giant. I don't want to see, this is a familiar story. And I do not want us to bypass that uncircumcised Philistine. David was David recognized he 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 looked from he he got past the physical and he went to the spiritual. Yeah. When we talk about uncircumcised, we're talking about somebody that is not in a covenant relationship with God. And David recognized wait a minute, y'all, this man is, this giant is not even in a relationship with God. And we are under the covenant of God as children of God. You know I'm saying, he, so he's like, why in the world are we, for lack of a better, why are we tripping yeah. on, on this? You know what I'm saying, do you not know who you are? Do you not know who's covering you? right now. And many times as children of God, we do not conquer our giant because we are not moving, uh, 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 we're not operating underneath the covering that we have. And I pointed out, if I had an umbrella and I can show it to you, I'll show it to you right now. As long as you have that umbrella, you have covering. 
but it's not until you open up the umbrella mm -hmm. and get underneath the umbrella are you now protected from the elements that's coming down on you? Yes, sir. Children of, children of God, don't miss your shot. You said, children of God, you are, you and I, we are under a covenant. God is protecting us. Now, if you don't open up that umbrella and walk under your protection, you're never going to conquer your giants. But David walked in his purpose. He allowed God to, 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 he said, this battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. You got to remember who you are and whose you are. And if yeah. you do that, you will conquer your giants every time. But keep in mind, they're going to keep coming. But understand, they do die. If you will, pray with me, please. Father God, will your humble servants approach thy throne of grace. Father, we ask in a prayer for those that are listening uh, to us uh, this day. Uh, Father, we just pray that you will work in each and every one of our lives. Father, help us to remember that we are covered and in a covenant relationship with you. Father, help us to allow your power to germinate our soul and explode our faith, that we might be the giant slayers that you would want us to be. Be with us, guide us, and keep us. Bless this ministry. This is our humble prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.